Hey everybody, so today in maths class we are gonna do a theorem named Lemmy's theorem. It's a very important theorem in mechanics. So let's see what this theorem states. It states that if three non-collinear forces acting at a point are in equilibrium, then each is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two. So now, first of all, we are given that there are three forces which are non-collinear and they are acting at a point and these are in equilibrium. So firstly, let's draw these three forces. So let this force be P and this force be Q and this force be R. So these are the three forces that are acting at a point O and these three forces are in equilibrium. So what do we need to prove? That each of these three forces is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two. So if we are talking about this P force, what would be the two other forces Q and R and what what would be the angle between these two forces so to name the angle let us just write here L M and N so if we are talking about this P force what are the two other forces Q and R and what is the angle between them angle M O N so sine of this angle Okay, and if we are talking about this Q force, then what are the two other forces P and R and what is the angle between them? Angle NOL, so sine of NOL. And if we are talking about this R force, then the angle between P and Q and that is LOM, so sine of LOM. So P upon sine of MON will be equal to Q upon sine of NOL and would be this would be equal to R upon sine of LOM. This is what we need to prove. So how could we prove it? We do not know what these angles are. What is the value of these angles? So to know that we would use converse of the triangle law of forces by the converse of the triangle law of forces. If you do not know what this law is, I highly recommend you to watch the video uh, on my channel in the playlist mechanics in which I explained about this law you could also see the link in the top right corner of this video. So just click it and watch this video first if you haven't. So now for those who have watched this video, let me tell you what the converse of triangle law of forces is. You know, it states that if three forces acting at a point are in equilibrium. So now we have the three forces P, Q and R and these three are acting at a point O and R in equilibrium. So these three forces can be represented by the sides of a triangle whose sides are respectively parallel to the direction of these three forces. So let us just draw that triangle whose sides would be respectively parallel to these three forces. Let us name this triangle A, B, and C. Okay, so this is a triangle A, B, C, and this B, C vector, it is parallel to the direction of the P force, and this C, A vector, it is parallel to the direction of this Q force, and this A, B vector, it is parallel to the direction of this R force. So this is a triangle. I wrote that Q. Let me write R and P too. Why am I writing P Q R? Because by the converse of the triangle law of forces, this is a triangle 
whose sides you know are parallel to the direction of the forces so i can write here pqr because by this law it states that these sides these represent these forces pqr so that is why i have written p q and r here because i used this converse of the triangle law of forces so direction we know that uh, the bc uh, vector direction it's parallel to that of the p force so if i am saying that this p force is represented by this bc side of the triangle abc what about its magnitude it would simply be that the magnitude you know uh, of these three forces p q r the sides of this triangle these are proportional to the magnitude of these three forces so let me just write it down the sides of the triangle are proportional to the forces in magnitude the sides are proportional to the you know uh, you could say forces in direction but the sides of this triangle are proportional to the forces in magnitude also okay so what does the word proportional means i we, uh, i also told you earlier like p upon sin mon would be equal to q upon sin nol would be equal to r upon sin lom as we need to prove but in case of here as we have written that the sides of the triangle are proportional to the forces in magnitude so what are the forces b okay so upon it would be bc because that is the side of the triangle that represents this force so it would be equal to q upon ca and that would be equal to r upon ab so this is uh, what means when i am saying that the sides of the triangle abc are proportional to the forces p q and r and magnitude so let me just say that this is equation number one and now we did this because we wanted to know that what these angles are so let's just find out what these angles are now we know that this you know b a c angle b a c this angle it is the angle between the a b vector and a c vector we know that r vector r force is represented by this a b vector but Q force is not represented by AC vector. It is represented by CA vector. So this can't be the angle between the forces R and Q. Some of you might get confused. So I am telling you that this BAC angle, this angle, it is not the angle between the forces Q and R because it is the angle between the vectors AB and AC but Q force it is represented by CA so let us just extend this okay I'm not extending it very greatly <laughs> uh, it's not good even to see so apart from that so we have extended this now this this line this also represents the Q force okay so now we can say that this is the angle that we need because this is the angle that is between the forces q and r so if we are gonna say that this angle that is inside the triangle this angle is a angle so what would be the value of this angle 180 degree minus a because the sum of these two angles is equal to 180 so if this angle is a this is 180 degree minus a due to the linear sum property so q and r forces the angle between them is 180 degree minus a so here is the q force here is the r force here is the angle between them angle m o n and what is its value 180 degree minus a now similarly we have this p force and we have this r force so let's just extend it and now this is 
R force and now this is the angle between P force and R force. So if we say that this A, B, C angle is angle B, so what would be this angle 180 degree minus B and in the same way we would extend this. <laughs> the word C that I have written is coming in the way. Now this is the P force and this is the Q force. Now what is the angle between them? This angle. So if this angle, angle A, C, B is the angle C, what is the, uh, the angle that is outside that of the triangle? It is 180 degree minus C due to the linear sum property. So the angle between P force and R force, P force and R force, it's 180 degree minus B and the angle between P force and Q force, P force and Q force, the angle is 180 degree minus C. So that is how we get the values of the angles between the two forces, you know, differently. Okay. So now we have got the values. Now what do we do? We apply sine formula by applying sine formula to triangle A, B, C. What does the sine formula say? For example, if I am talking about uh, this BC side, what is the angle that is opposite to this side? This angle A, okay? So its sign would be, uh, the signs of all the angles would be proportional to these, their, to their opposite sides, you know? So from, if we are applying sine formula to triangle ABC, definitely the sides are proportional now BC what's this is this side and what's the angle that is opposite to it angle a sine a CA CA side okay what's the angle that is opposite to it angle B so sine of angle B and similarly here sine of angle C so let us just say that it is equation number two so by we applied sine formula and we got BC upon sine A equal to C A upon sine B equal to A B upon sine C. This simply means that the B C C A A B sides are proportional to the sine A sine B sine C. Okay. Why we did this? Why we applied sine formula? Because we needed to do that and because we know that we need to prove is that this P force, you know, uh, we need, we know this angle the angle between the Q and R force, it's 180 degree minus A. But we need sine of this angle. So how would be, how would be, how would be, how would we be doing that? Okay, so to do that, I applied sine formula here. So that we could include, you know, sine in the equation in this theorem and somehow we would do something and would be able to prove the theorem. So <laughs> that's why I did it, simply, huh? Okay, the next thing now we are gonna do is in front of our eyes because in the first equation we see that these three forces are proportional to the sides of the triangle ABC. But in the second equation we see that the sides of the triangle ABC are proportional to the sine of the angles that are opposite to them. So from these two equations, we could say from equations 1 and 2, it is clear that P, Q and R forces are also proportional to the sine of the angles A, B and C. So let us just write it down. P upon sine A, it would be equal to Q upon sine B equal to R upon sine C. You could simply say that that the uh, sides you know B C C A A B they just got cancelled out when we you know equated the equations one and two okay so now this is we have with us now we are very close to proving this theorem how could we know that because we needed to prove that P upon sine 180 degree minus A would be equal to 
Q upon sine 180 degree minus B would be equal to R upon sine 180 degree minus C because that's here it is P force what's the angle opposite it 180 degree minus A so the sine the sine of this angle we need okay so now what should we do I think I think I think yes I've got an idea okay it's not an idea you know we know we all know the sine and cos properties we know that let me just write it with another pen that sine theta is equal to sine 180 degree minus theta because that falls in the second quarter and in the second quarter sine is positive so that's how this came so now if we could simply write sine 180 degree minus a instead of sine a we could write sine 180 degree minus b instead of sine b we could write sine 180 degree minus c instead of sine c why not let's write it down yeah. let me also write it with another p upon sine 180 degree minus a would be equal to q upon sine 180 degree minus b would be equal to r upon sine 180 degree minus c so that was the thing that we needed to prove because this you know this angle 180 degree minus a what do we call it m o n so this angle sine m o n q upon sine 180 degree minus b so this is the angle n o l n o l sine i forgot to you why 180 degree minus c it's this l o m okay so now this angle you know it is the angle between the forces q and r and here we have p yeah so this is the thing that we needed to prove this nol it is the angle between the forces p and r when we are talking about the force q and when we are talking about r this angle is the angle between the forces P and Q and we have got sign for all of these and these are proportional so that was the thing that we needed to prove or we could just simply write also if you you know want a very informative something I don't know what something okay let me just write it down p upon sine as we know that this angle is the angle between the forces q and r let me just write it in this way so uh, nothing great i did you know i just uh, wrote this m o n angle as bracket q uh, comma r so to denote it that this is the sine of the angle that is uh, the angle between the forces q and r so i just did that if you want to write it like this you could also write it like this so i think that i have proved the Lamy's theorem and you would also have understood how it has been proved um, sorry for all the distractions if I have distracted you you know uh, in between when doing this theorem if you have any doubt you can just simply ask me in the comment section I think that's enough for today bye bye